Hi everybody, this is one. So I haven't been uploading lately. Uh, I had to assemble a desk and that bitch took me forever. I'm gonna upload a video about it soon on my vlogging channel. And yeah, if you wanna watch that, uh, there should be a link in the description or at the end of the video. Squad with the squad. We gon' take your job. You keep trying to send us back, but we keep running off. Anyway, here's what I want to talk about. I wanted to make a video on a Friday, but uh, something kind of, you know, stopped me. Because I wanted to make a video on LSRP, but uh, a situation arose, and I feel like the situation is worth talking about. Because this is a situation about some people misbehaving doing an admin set. And I feel like this is an important point to make. I feel like this is very important to talk about how you should behave doing an admin set for the best outcome in general. So without further ado, uh, let me begin by telling you the prefix of the story or what led up to the situation. Now unfortunately I didn't record the incident itself, if I did there wouldn't be an admin set because we would just be able to see the evidence and go like, okay, well, there's no evidence, well, there is evidence of the wrongdoing, uh, we're done here. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I usually have an instant action feature enabled on my shadow play, however, I didn't then because I was just playing GTA World. And from that, Unfortunately, when I play GTA World, that feature is bugged. So I had it disabled to record some GTA World content. Um, yeah, because of that, I couldn't record the incident itself, but I did manage to record the aftermath. We're going to watch the aftermath together, and I'm going to disable the sound on the aftermath because it picked up my microphone. My microphone was on at the time. And there's nothing really interesting going on, aside from the fact that I was watching uh, Funhouse on my phone while role-playing, and I was still playing in the recording, which I find kind of funny. <laughs> Michelle went to Valentine's Complex to meet somebody, I don't remember for what purpose, uh, but uh, this person was standing there, and while waiting, Michelle is, he started talking to Michelle. Michelle is a cautious person, so she stood beside him, watched the entrance, and uh, yeah, she was just looking around as I casually do usually, you know, to be observant. And they talked. They talked about something I don't remember what. And then this person in a white shirt with a duffel bag walks to the front door and starts walking up the stairs. But he does it in a weird way, you know. He walks up, stops, and he walks up again, you know. Because I, w I watched him do it. Michelle was watching him do it. She, Michelle picked a good spot where she could watch him cautiously. And anybody with a huge bag in a place where that's not common, like, you know, a hotel, it, 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 it's suspicious, right? It's suspicious when somebody walks in with a huge bag. So, I was watching that, and all of a sudden, he role plays pulling out a shotgun, right? He role plays pulling out a shotgun. Now, Michelle had the pistol in her hip holster, while the guy, while the guy in the white shirt, he had the shotgun in a duffel bag that was on his back. Now, think about it. We got a person with a hip holster and a pistol inside it and a shotgun on the back. Which one is gonna go out first? The pistol, obviously, because it's right there and it's accessible. The shotgun is not nearly as accessible. It's not even attached to his body. It's uh, just hanging. It's inside a duffel bag. You would have to turn the duffel bag around Zip it open, I assume it was zipped, because if you're carrying a shotgun in an unzipped bag, that's just a whole nother level of idiocity. Then pull out the shotgun. And that takes a long time. Pulling out the shotgun out of a duffel bag alone would take 
a long time compared to pulling out a gun from your hip holster even if it's concealed. What concealed hip holster usually means is you pull up a shirt and it's right there. You just grab it and there you go. It doesn't take a long time compared to pulling out a goddamn shotgun. So I pulled out the shotgun. Uh, as we all know, Samp is not exactly great at emulating something like pulling out a weapon. Because Grand of Titles and Dress didn't have any animations for pulling out weapons, let alone from behind your back or from your hip holster. So the way Samp, the way GTS and Dress handles scrolling animations is they literally just appear in your hand. So what he did was, you know, the shotgun just appeared in his hand while I was looking at him. Now keep that in mind because that's very important. I was looking at him and the shotgun appeared in his hand. Realistically speaking, what he roleplayed doing there is swinging the duffel back around, zipping it open and pulling the shotgun out. Now he didn't roleplay any of that, obviously, like why would he bother? But uh, yeah, that's essentially what he did. So my character pulls out her handgun. I don't need to roleplay that, it's pretty a, a simple fucking action and it would not... I don't think it would add anything to a roleplay scene if I had to type it out because it's an action scene, every millisecond matters. Anyway, so he pulls out the shotgun, which takes a long time realistically, so I pull out my pistol because he didn't take me by surprise, I was watching him pull out the shotgun, I feel like I would have plenty of time to react to that. I have done so in the past, even against other pistols, and admins have ruled it in my favor. So I've done it. Uh, it was almost an instinctive action, and we had a gunfight. I wish I recorded that gunfight, because I came out victorious in that gunfight. I actually feel really proud about that, because he had an advantage over me, he had a shotgun, but luckily for me, he couldn't aim it as well as I could aim my handgun, so I managed to win. After that, I started recording, and now we'll watch the recording together. 3, 2, 1, go. So this is immediately after the shootout. As you can see they're already throwing in slash bees. Ooh, roleplay, ooh, reported. Nobody needs that. There's no need for that. Uh, you should not act like that even if you are reporting someone. There's no point of informing them of it, unless you've already made a form report. Because it gives the other party... Well, first of all, it distracts me from what's happening, because the situation hasn't ended at all. We had a gunfight, but the situation is still ongoing, so there's... Nobody needs to be distracted right now. Anyway, so I'm suspecting this guy to be involved with the other guy, and my suspicions were corrected uh, later on, but the reason why I suspected him was because he just stood during that gunfight, because he knew what was happening, okay? He knew what was happening, he knew he knew it all along, clearly, because if he didn't know what was happening, he would probably run or hide or, I don't know, fight, just do something. There was no adrenaline in that guy, he was completely calm. This guy shows up out of nowhere, uh, and I have a suspicion that they're using voice over IP pro uh, program, or oh, that's redundant. He's, I have a suspicion that they're using the likes of Skype or TeamSpeak, because like, of what happens next, it's pretty fucking obvious. He, he does two me's. Uh, uh, first one is goes next near Michelle, completely misspelled. And the next one is stands in front of Michelle, even though there was no space to stand in front of me. There was a sofa and another thing. And the reason why he does that is so that the other guy can run away. And I start shooting them because that's what I do when people disobey my commands at gunpoint. That's just, that's just a, a thing. Anyway, um, why did he do that? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why he did that. It's because the guy told him in voiceover IP to do that. Anyway, Murat says he called admins, I suddenly get frozen. Now I wasn't expecting that because... In like 99.9% .9 cases, admins don't give a shit. So this is my first admin sit in a long time. I don't think I've had an admin sit in 2018, if you don't count the ones I have had in police department, uh, the sheriff's department, as uh, Gloria. Anyway, admin questions me about the situation. Now, the admin didn't see the shootout as well, because if he did, he probably would see my side and the thing would be much easier to prove. And I really wish I had recorded it, but I didn't, uh, because I didn't have action replay on. 
So yeah. Uh, right, so he asked me why didn't I roleplay the fear of Murat's shotgun. So what you do when you get asked the question is you respond as clearly as possible. You don't add any personalized comments or opinionated comments uh, unless it's relevant, unless it's directly relevant with the case. Uh, nothing to like, you don't slam, you don't insult the other party as I often see happen in admin sets. There is no point of that. Uh, so, uh, admin asked me if I have any evidence, and I like this about this, this particular admin, because this guy uh, actually listens to both sides, and I don't see it with all admins, I see cases where admins just try to get through it as soon as possible, and I mean, I can kind of understand it, but at the same time, when you're handing out punishments, that's... It's a little sketchy, you shouldn't do that. But this admin is a good, it is an example of a, a fantastic administration work. I just can't complain about anything that he did. Uh, so he asks if I have any evidence. He does so politely. You know, he doesn't say please. I mean, he doesn't have to say please. But what I mean is that he doesn't make it personal. What, what I see some admins do is they make it personal. They, uh, like, accuse you of something. And... I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that. It discourages people. And, and it paints this horrible perception of administration team. I don't think that's necessary at all. If that can be avoided, then that's for the betterment of everybody. So there's no point of uh, taking it personal. This is just... They, they, admins should be there to do the job of an admin, to moderate the situation. Don't take it personal. It's just business. Alright. So, I did something that I kind of regret. I was like, what evidence is there of me rule breaking? But uh, the reason why I said that was because I didn't want the admin to have this uh, one side perception against me. Um, but thankfully, the admin saw that they were rule breaking because uh, he, after the guy reported me immediately after the situation, uh, that's why he fucked up, because the admins started spectating, and they saw the blatant uh, voice over IP that they were doing. The coordination that was there without any coordination in character-wise was blatant. The, the guy just kind of runs up in front of me without any cue from the other guy. It's pretty obvious that they were using voice over IP, but there isn't enough evidence to accuse them of that. Uh, so, they didn't punish him. Which, he didn't punish them for that, so, I mean, that's, that's just fantastic. I think that's fantastic that he didn't do that, because you shouldn't punish people when there isn't enough evidence. Even though it's pretty obvious, I don't think you should punish people without evidence. Um, anyway, so, uh, Admin puts us all together, and I think he should have moved us. He, he does move us later, but... Uh, at this point he doesn't. I, sh I think you should always move people to like a secluded location if you are having an admin sit. But I guess he thought that nobody would bother us, which is fair enough, I guess. So, uh... These guys say that they had a, a screenshot. What they were accusing me of? They were accusing me of not being able to see them. Now, the screenshot that he had was from after the shooter, and I'll show the screenshot now. That, that screenshot has nothing to do with their accusation. The accusation is that I wouldn't be able to see them from that angle. Now, I wasn't in that position initially. I was standing right next to the guy and I saw the guy with the shotgun coming from a mile away. If I didn't, I would have probably lost the gunfight. Anyway, um, so I argue my point that, okay, I would have enough time to react because I was looking at you doing it and... Yeah, that, that was just me arguing my point. Uh, some mistakes I've made, I just said that... Uh, you know, maybe I was a little too upfront. At some point, administrator decided to mute me. Maybe he maybe that was just like a, a precaution thing. Uh, Murat makes a point that, Do you understand I was aiming at you for 5 seconds, then you scrolled? Uh, well, here's the thing, okay? Here's the things you have to consider. First thing you have to consider is when you draw a gun in real life, when it's a shotgun in a duffel bag on your back, that's gonna take 
longer than a moment. Another thing to consider is the ping and the delay that it takes for things to render on my screen compared to yours. So if you pull out a gun, it's going to be pulled out later on my screen. Not significantly, the ping was about 200 for each player on these kind of servers, but that's about half a second total. And then there's a reaction time for brain, which is around 800, 80 milliseconds, so that's, yeah, that runs up to around a half a second. So that's half a second. Another thing you have to consider is that um, the gun gets pulled out on your screen instantly, and, and the, during the adrenaline, time seems to slow down. The way, because you remember more things, because you are under adrenaline, and LSRP is a high stakes game. When you lose a gunfight, you lose a lot of money. With the prices of firearms in the server, I cannot imagine how much money he lost for that shotgun when he went to rob me. Now, fortunately, my characters, most of my characters own firearms legally, so it's not as expensive for them. Uh, for the black market, I've heard some ridiculous stories of firearms costing enormous amounts. We're talking Desert Eagles costing 80 grand compared to 25 for a law-abiding person. That's like almost a five times, a four times increase. That's ridiculous. And um, yeah, so the price, prices, the, the money he lost, the money he risked just to rob me of my gun. That's that's what that's what happened. He was trying to rob me. They they were trying to rob me of my gun. That's what I'm thinking happened, and that's why they did it. They thought, oh, shotgun versus pistol, I'm gonna win for sure. But what they didn't count for was well, that I had these situations happen to me all the time, and I was really experienced at that point. And hell, that's not really that unrealistic. Like you could argue, oh, but Michelle died in every one of those cases, so they wouldn't like she wouldn't remember those cases. Not true, Michelle has survived multiple attacks like these, so it, it would not be unrealistic for her to be cautious and to know what to look out for, especially considering that those things are usually trained to people who legally carry firearms. Anyway, what, what I was talking about? So he argued that I wouldn't have the reaction, so, react, so he said that I reacted too slowly. He said they acted after five seconds of him aiming a firearm. Now, I don't think he's lying, but I don't think he's right as well. I think he perceived it as five solid seconds, but I don't think, but I don't think you perceive five seconds as normal time. What you think was five solid seconds could have been just one second because, but you perceive it as five seconds because of the adrenaline. And when you add up the, so what I think happened was it took me half a second to react to it, or even a one solid second. I think a one solid second reaction is normal and it's not out of the loop. And I think it wouldn't take, it would take him longer than one second to pull out a shotgun that was on his back in a bag. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that I would still have enough time to pull it out. I don't think it was five solid seconds. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I think it was one second, but he perceived that as five seconds because of the ping and the adrenaline. So I don't think he's lying. I just think he's mis I think he misunderstood himself. Anyway, now we're watching the continuation from this point. So... So yeah, he is accusing me of being in a different place and I've looked at the screenshot. It's not true because, well, I was in a different place when the shootout started. While the shootout happened, I walked left while shooting, because you don't want to be standing still in the gunfight in SAMP. Why? Because unless you're sea bugging, when you're shooting with a deagle, your fire rate, and I remember this because I did all the calculations, is 85. 
85 rounds per minute. Now that's pretty that's pretty slow. That's extremely slow because in real life you can shoot much faster. You can shoot it at 100 rate per second rounds per minute. You can shoot it much faster in real life, but because this is a, a game, you know, and the gun, the, the Desert Eagle, you know, it has such a small fire rate. So, because you have such a slow fire rate, it won't make sense to stand still while you're shooting. You have to move, you have to strafe back and forth, it's pretty normal. The guy with the shotgun was pretty much standing still, but he was strafing, he was straining back and... He was strafing back and forth on the stairs, I believe. I mean, it's hard to remember. The fight happened a couple of days ago at this point, and I was preoccupied with assembling that stupid desk and some family stuff. So anyway, yeah. So they're accusing me of standing in a different position, which in which I was, and they're using a screenshot that's completely irrelevant. The screenshot shows me after the gunfight, when what's relevant is before the gunfight. So the point is, nobody has evidence of what happened. And... I'm trying to explain to the admin that while I was communicating with Joseph, but uh, I was actually looking at the white man who came in with a bag. And I'm going to skip a little bit forward to where the admin actually comes to a conclusion on this case. But he doesn't stop it there, so pay attention to that. I explain my case, I explain... One thing I want to mention, right, is something that's coming up. I accused them of using voice over IP and while I still believe that they did and I think the admin even agrees with me I shouldn't have done this I, you shouldn't accuse people of rule breaking unless you have concrete evidence that they have now when it comes to voice over IP it's pretty hard to prove I mean I have pretty solid evidence right here but I don't I'm not even concerned of uh, this I mean this is a pretty common practice and yeah I, I by all means, I disagree with it. Uh, I myself communicate in out of character, and that's different. I don't coordinate in character attacks, but that's not the focus of the video. The focus of the video right now is the behavior you must have during admin sits. So don't accuse people. This was my mistake. I shouldn't have accused them of voice over IP, in my opinion. That being said, I'm very happy that the admin responded so quickly because. Because the administrator saw what happened, the administrator saw what happened, and he took that accusation, and he went forward on it. So we'll see what happens now. Third clip. So at this point, the administrator finally decides to teleport us to a different location. It's about time. Uh, he mutes everybody just for safety sake, for his sanity sake, and I absolutely understand that. I've actually myself uh, been in shoes similar to his. I haven't been an admin, I've been a game master on certain roleplay servers, where I taught new new players how to roleplay. I, I taught them basic rules and such. Anyway, and this is the conclusion that the admin came forward on the first issue, the issue of them accusing me of failure to ro roleplay fear. Uh, this is what's going to happen. The reporting party does not have enough evidence to show that Michelle was in fact not facing them. She could have easily watched you take the gun out and acted accordingly. Even a newbie shooter can unholster a firearm much faster than taking a gun out of a bag. I will be taking no action. Bravo! Right here. He looked at the evidence, he gave both parties their say. He let both parties speak. And he listened to them. He painstakingly took 30 minutes out of his life to listen to this case. I sincerely hope he gets paid a, a, a justified amount of money, at least minimum wage, but I think he deserves more. Because this is a legitimate position, this is a legit job that he's holding right now. And he's doing it marvelously. He should be set as the example of how admins should handle their stuff. 
Now, if he gave me special treatment, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't prefer special treatment. I don't like special treatment. But he concluded that based on the evidence that we have, there isn't enough evidence to convict me of wrongdoing, so there is no action taken. Now, that is how you do authority. Any authority. Um, admins are basically the, the cops, the, the cops of the LSRP. They, 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 the ones that moderate everything. They, 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 they're like the judges from the Judge Dredd film. They are the cop. They're both the cops. They enforce the law and they convict people at the same time. It's a very high position to take, and it's an extremely easy position to abuse. And we've seen it before. We've seen certain admins abusing those positions, not taking account sin, and we've seen horrible effects that they have both on the administration reputation and on people's reputation as well. So it's essential, okay, it's essential that these admins like this one get called out as an example of an amazing, amazing admin. Now what he's doing now is he went on to the second issue at hand and that second issue is the way they behaved immediately after the shootout. Now let me remind you, okay, the only reason admin is even questioning him is because he saw that case and why he saw the second case was because these guys rage reported me basically immediately after the situation they immediately reported me there was no positives in that for them in, in particular if they didn't report an admin in that case there would be no if they didn't report the admin in that case if they <laughs> If they didn't bother reporting in that particular case and they waited and made a form report, that would have been much deadlier for me. That would have been much deadlier for me. I would have to upload the videos, I would have to prove everything. But what they, they rage reported me and basically stuck a stick in their own bicycle wheel while riding it, if you know what I mean. They basically tripped over themselves because the admin started spectating them, started watching what was happening, and he caught them in the act. He caught them doing those wrongdoings. Now at this point, Administrator finally teleports us to a secluded location right next to the San News helicopter, which I found kind of amusing. And yeah, we started talking there. I think it would have been better if we went there to begin with, but you know, that's, that's fine. It's not that's not a huge complaint uh, if there's an admin sit in public it's not a huge complaint I mean everything else he did was amazing so honestly he's a, a fantastic example of an administrator in my opinion so a couple of so we're talking about the behavior these guys had at the admin sit now what's important is I ask you people to not hunt down these people and to, you know, brag to them, you know, or to accuse them of anything. This is, you shouldn't judge people on cases like these. And you shouldn't hunt down and bother people for cases you're not involved in. You, you shouldn't worry about that. Even though I'm fairly certain these guys are probably targeting me, I, I'm, I'm, this, it's, it's not that necessary to go out and of your way to do that to people. I don't think that should be anyone's priority. Now, I will criticize the admin a little bit. I think he went a little harsh on Ezio here. How hard did your character become in 4 days, or how unintelligent did he become? I feel like that was a little harsh. Just a little bit harsh. That being said, it was kind of warranted. I mean, those guys did, did give the admin a hard time. They mocked him, and they were just behaving inappropriate during the situation. They laughed, they, do, they used the laughter animation during the admin situation. During an admin situation, don't touch your keyboard for anything other than typing. It's an admin sit. Don't fucking mess around, okay? Admins aren't here to mess around. Admins, some of the admins on LSRP are being paid. That's what I've heard. 
Um, I don't remember from what source though, so don't quote me. And I mean, I would understand if they're being paid because it is a real job. Being an administrator is a real job. So yeah, anyway. Ezio says that he is working for Makai... <coughs> Ezio here says that he works for a crime network for this guy in particular and he says that he basically saved his boss. Now, honestly, think about that for a second. Who would put their life on the line for their boss? Like, even if you're a bodyguard. Like, honestly, what you would do is you would stand in your position, you wouldn't dive, it's not, it's not Hollywood, okay? It's not Hollywood. You wouldn't dive and take the bullet for him unless you really, really know him, unless he's like your best buddy or something. In which case, maybe you would, maybe you would. So basically, he say, basically that means like questioning them. Uh, is there any relationship? Are you guys lovers or something? And because the world is, I, you know, mainly homophobic, these guys probably came from a place where um, this is this is considered an insult. So they're laughing their asses off. They're thinking an admin insulted me. Haha, <laughs> this is so funny. No, I don't think he actually insulted them. I think he was genuine. And uh, in any case, laughing and taking the situation not seriously and doing these animations is not doing anybody good. Not not definitely, it's not doing you any good. It's draining on the admins. Sanity, that's for sure, because I know that because he's handling the case Because it's raining on my sanity and I'm not even handling the case So I so I can only imagine what kind of stress the admin is going through He has to handle the situation in a way that satisfies as many people as possible, essentially Admin is going under extreme stress right now He has to He has to but, but uh, he has the advantage that he actually saw the situation and he can make a judgment call on his own. Again, he's acting like a judge from the Judge Dredd film. It's a very heavy position and it's a position that's really easy to abuse. And again, they're acting in a mocking manner. Here it is. You are the first admin to be so interested in our characters. What is your concern, sweetie? Jesus Christ. When he asked those people about relationships, about being lovers, I don't think that was an insult, I think that was a genuine concern. When he called, when these guys called him a sweetie though, why are they doing that? He's The admin isn't in question right now, the admin is almost never in question. So they weren't questioning about the admin. They just mocked him by saying sweetie while they were being questioned in admin set. Now that's never a good thing to do. If you're ever being investigated by an authority figure, mocking him and making him angry is not a smart thing to do. It's not. Not one bit. So admin, you know, he got a little upset. He said, he said, would you rather be admin jailed right off? Because to me, it looks like both of you idiotically orchestrated some kind of bullshit scheme to fool user one. I kind of agree with him, but at the same time there isn't exact evidence of that. I mean, uh, I mean, they get close, they get close. But I wouldn't call this enough evidence, barely. It kind of, it's kind of close. Anyway, we've got better things to do than full user one. Seriously, we want everyone to enjoy themselves. Eh! <laughs> um, mm, I don't know. The fact that you immediately went to report me after the situation doesn't seem like you got those intentions. I just don't see those intentions in you. And the fact that you mocked the admin doesn't really come off as you want everybody to enjoy themselves. You can see how you're not painting the picture that you want everybody... <sighs> you can see how you're not exactly painting the picture that you want everybody to enjoy themselves. Anyway, here is the argument. 
uh, Ezio jumped in front of Joseph to save his life because he was his boss. And after they talked about it, um, I don't think that's uh, a thing. If they're best buddies, maybe. I mean, yeah, you know what? I would do anything for my friends, but running in front of a, a person with a gun, that's basically suicide in real life, you know, at least. Running at a person with a gun would basically be suicide. I think I made a mistake in that situation. I should have shot him when he ran at me, but the first thing he did he was ran to my side and then he stood in front of me, which is, was very weird of him to do. I mean, he didn't technically stay in, in front of me because I was... I, 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 when he ran in front of me, I kind of went to the side, you know, because I wanted to see both of them at the same time. I didn't want him to grab me in a chokehold or anything. So I stood in front of some sofa, so he couldn't even stand in front of me. And that guy just started running off. Uh, yeah, so basically, when it comes to admin sits, what's most important is that you keep your composure, you stay neutral, you don't bring personal bullshit into it. Um, personal opinions are fine, but the opinions of other people specifically are necessary. Nobody cares about your arbitrary opinions. Opinions about something realistic or how things will behave in their life are okay. If I am being honest, I don't like admin sits at all. I would prefer to handle things on a forum. Because when I am playing a game, I can give less shit about going out of character. That's the last thing I want to do. But these guys went into the out of character immediately. Whenever I report somebody, I most of the time I report them over forum. Or I just don't bother reporting them, but I should be reporting them on the forum. Anyway, the admin questions them and he gives the most important thing, he gives everybody a chance to speak, and I've always spoken about this. If we're being honest with ourselves, it's obviously been orchestrated through voiceover IPs. One of, the, and one of the things you should do in these situations is to just let them dig their own grave by talking. Don't say anything. When you're not being questioned, don't say anything. Uh, so the admin didn't believe them and he jailed him for not role playing gunfire and power gaming. So I'm guessing what he did was he must have looked through their history because he saw that Ezio was only four days after a name change. So he must have looked at some kind of background history of these people, which I also think is a fantastic thing of him to do. It gives you... Well, I don't think that somebody who has an admin history is automatically a bad person, not at all. Uh, or actually, in real life as well, if somebody has a criminal history, I don't necessarily think that they're a bad person. It might just mean that they got in a bad situation. We don't all start off in the same place in life. It's on, some people start off in a much worse place, where it's much easier to be abused and to end up on a rap sheet. Um, so we shouldn't judge people based on that uh, on data like that. But I still think it's good to look back at those things. Anyway. That was me talking about this admin situation. I want to shout out this admin as an example of how administration... This should be an example of how administration should be done for all administrations, for all authority figures everywhere who act the roles of judges, who hand out sentences. He looked at all the evidence at hand and he gave everybody a chance to speak. So it was basically like a... A court. <laughs> it was basically an impromptu court. I mean, it's not the best, but hey, I think it was handled pretty well. And I'm not just saying that because I didn't get punished. I'm happy that I didn't get any special treatment. I'm happy that the admin talked to me and he questioned me about the situation. So the point is, remain calm, okay? Anything can happen. And it's not the end of the world. At the end of the and at the end of it all, it's a game. So the lesson I've learned from this is to make sure to keep that instant action replay feature on and 
So anybody who can install Shadowplay, I recommend it. So if you have an NVIDIA, you can probably install Shadowplay. I recommend you do that, so you save and, you, and I recommend that you always record because you can never predict when those situations occur. I was watching that guy approach me with a duffel bag, which was a little suspicious, but it, you know, it's not enough suspicious to think like, okay, this is it, this is a robbery. Because if I was, if I always had that frame of mind, I would just be exhausted after playing one game. Now I'm rather paranoid in, uh, I'm overly protective of myself in these games, uh, well, because those are really high stakes games, but at the end of the, at the end of it all, it's just a game. So, you know, even if you do get unfairly punished, don't worry, there's always admin reports, you can always appeal your case. The po Next time, I will talk about how to go about getting unbanned or appealing any sort of punishment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay awesome.